Hey there, Ryan Kingsline here with another tip for architects and how to use ZBrush. I'm just kind of busting through this. I was really excited and kind of on a kick for all the things and the ways in which we could use it for model building and stuff like that. What I want to talk to you about right now is kind of some ways in which you create this terrain, right? It's just real simple terrain, gives you a sense of the slope and where things are moving, things of that nature. So I'm going to do this with the, the model I've been using in the past. So let me just open up that file. That is the last one. And whichever file you're using, there's one thing you got to do for us to get started. You got to go into Lightbox. You got to click Tool, and you got to click this thick plane.ztl. That's what you need because that's basically the elevation. So we're going to just take whichever model it is that we want. Like I think we had one that was kind of a little nuts like this, right? Who knows what that's going to be, but that's a perfect candidate for a slope, I think. So I'm going to append that thick plane and then select it. Now, its orientation is wrong. Not that it's wrong, it's just wrong for our purposes. Deformation, let's go rotate. I'm going to rotate it in X. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to be careful so, I don't, so it's exactly precise. I'm going to set it at 90. And then I might increase the size of this just to give us some room in there. And that's all kind of basic. So I can also come in to move and scale with transpose and start to adjust these things, clicking the little ends there. But we want to get this, uh, I don't know, about like that. And we need to find the ground plane, so wherever the ground is going to be. Uh, and we'll move this forward a touch. Yeah. Next, we're going to have to kind of set some sort of elevation, some basic unit. So if we were to assume that this, and I'm just guessing here, we were to assume this is like, what, a 12-foot ceiling? I mean, I'd prefer a 14-foot, 14, 14 not inch, ceiling. Uh, perspective is on, so let's put this in perspective. 10-foot, 5-foot. 2.5 foot, that's about one foot. So what do we want? For something like this, maybe the grade, we want that to be about three feet. So I'm just guessing one slot for every three feet, because we're going to take this and duplicate it and move it down. Uh, and we need to fit within a 10 foot, so, well, we'll let that fly. All right, so we need to increase the size, so I click one of these vertices. And I might just drag it off. And using move, I just do this. We need a good chunk, right, for this to really work and for, for us to get a sense of scale about it. Now, that's going to work for me. Back into draw. We're going to use this new array mesh feature. This is the key behind doing this. So what we do is we press array mesh and then immediately press transpose. Click transpose. Okay, and transpose, I mean move, scale, or rotate. And then once that happens, then we get this little cool thing that pops up in here, our little manipulator, so we can adjust it. Now I'm going to press the, uh, I'm going to hover over the action line, get to the middle white dot, and start to pull down. And you can see we've got one, two. And that fits because we're only repeating it twice. So I'm going to repeat that 21 times and use that center dot to drag this down so that we have some depth. There you go. You can also turn transparency on. We can see our, our house right there. And uh, why don't we see if we can't kind of push this out a little bit. Yeah, kind of start with a little bit of the slope already. Do we want to kind of scale this out too, because we can do that. The Great Pyramid. Turn perspective on so we got a sense of this. Okay, and once we've got this kind of roughly placed, the next step for us, the next thing that's going to be relatively important, is we come down, follow my cursor, to make mesh. That's all we're going to do. Make mesh. There's, a, there's more work to do, sorry, but this is the, all we're going to do here with Array Mesh. We just use Array Mesh with Transpose and then with Move and Scale 
pushing down, pulling out, and then scaling it. Now the next step is for us to come into polygroups and what we want to do is we want to start to uh, modify the terrain, right? Start to get a sense of how this thing would flow and where there might be some gaps and some extra flat areas that we can kind of put housing or something of that nature. So in order to do that, we want each one of these to be their own selectable item, their own little island that I can adjust and mess with. So I'm going to click auto group and now they're all separate. They're totally their own beast. And I'll look at this from a top view. And right off the bat my primary goal is going to be to use the move brush. And I'm going to turn dynamic off so I can work with a really large draw size. Now this is I mean this is a massive terrain for um for us here. I don't want to skip this note. It's probably too large, but make sure we're looking at it from a top view, you know. We're going to do some more subtle work, but I'm just trying to get basic generalized presentation for us. Pull some of that back to the house itself. Now we can kind of come in and start to establish smaller brush, some more individual contouring. Pull the slope out a little bit more in that area. and then see where we're at. I'm going to turn transparency off and we've got to pull this up a little bit I think. There we go. In fact we might have to pull all of that up a little bit. F to frame that. There you go. So now we have started to already create some of that. We can now start to just mush it around if we wanted to. But the really cool thing is going to be when we come into brush and we go to auto masking and say mask by polygroups at 100. And then from a top view, we can literally just pick an individual terrain layer and start to massage wherever that's going to be. And th you know, this is just like I said, if you're going to put something in there, if you need to for a model, but this is pretty fast to do and it's digital. So if we want to move this back a little bit, expose some of that, and then I'm going to move this back as well. I'm going to move that so it's like the whole thing's been excavated, a six foot retaining wall something like that. We have some depth in here so we have some room to start to excavate. Maybe we start to open that up and yeah so there but then we're gonna pull all of that back. We can get some tiered gardens in there. And I'm not going to do too much of this. You are the expert. You are the one that's going to do it. I just want to show you with these simple features how cool this can be. And again, you don't have to keep all the elevations the same. You can come in and start to adjust them and mash them and, you know, start to change their orientation a little bit. So I'm using an inflate brush, which is causing them to kind of shrink and collapse in certain places and then you can also smooth it although that's going to be a little on the damaging side I'd be mindful of that brush and there you go now if we were to apply some of the stuff that we had uh, had some experience with before to our to our building we just come down to our polygroups remember now we want to add some detailing just real quick detailing just something you know so it doesn't look so kind of all by itself 
So I'm going to take the, um, uh, let's say, take the pink, yeah, and then the blue. Perfect. And maybe the red. All right. So I'm going to go into my Z modeler. And let's go into pink. We're going to, with our pink, we're going to go to inset the entire polygroup. We're going to inset that whole thing. And then we're going to go to QMesh, the entire polygroup, and pull it in. And you remember what that does if you watched one of the earlier tips. It just gives you a nice window. All right, another little bit. When it starts to do that, I'll pull out first, and then I'll pull in. Done. Problem solved. Pretty crazy. And what do we want to do with this? Just use that to go a little nuts, maybe. And then let's go in and say take a single polygon with QMesh, and maybe we can start to do some odd things here as well. push that in. No, let's pull that out and then give that a little bit of a cantilever and start to support that structure and start and this is just all happening naturally. This and then let's create a little bit of a slope. It happens naturally. If I was to pull out and then keep pulling out, see how it'll do that? But I, I really like how it just kind of sets up here with this little sense. And then maybe what I do is I come in and I put an inset there. But I'm going to do this single poly group and then click to repeat it. Again, QMesh, single poly group, pull out, pull back in, and then just click on the other one to repeat that action. And we'll look at this side. Now we've got some things happening, a little some detailing for us to render. Throw this into Keyshot, just best preview, render it, whatever works. Now, this thing jumped right into Keyshot. It's taken forever to do that, but there you go. Now we've got ourselves a little model. We've got a model of the terrain, what it can handle. We can throw in some glass, all that stuff. Happy ZBrushing, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time. This is a little bit of a long one, but I just wanted to show you this really cool way you can use array mesh to help in your models and your digital life. Take care. Check out RyanKingsline.com and UArtsy to see what we're up to.